Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here's your host, Joe Stedman. Hello, this is Dr. Joe Stedman, and welcome to Wargamer School. Actually, this is more more like it, Detroit, number one. But uh, this is uh, the second segment in my Wargaming series, Wargaming School ser uh, series, which is basically a series I'm putting together to help those poor, unfortunate souls that play Euro games and other games uh, that don't know anything about war games who want to get addicted like us war gamers it's to kind of show them some basic terms um, show them what uh, us war gamers are talking about and hopefully get you guys into war games because that's that's the real games out there none of those wimpy little girl games that other people like come on <laughs> anyway so today what I want to talk about is some basic what the different kinds of war games that are out there the, the terminology I'm sure you've heard it discussed before on the dice tower and different podcast and on on board game geek and places but maybe you're not really familiar with what these things are so first let me show you let's talk about when people think about war games they typically think about the traditional hex war games hex meaning hexes so like uh for here here's a good example this is conflict of heroes this is a traditional hex war game and when i say hex i don't mean like i put in a hex on you you evil person but i mean more along the lines of a board if you zoom in there monica it's a board that has little hexes on it. Woo! -hoo! All right, and that's all it means. This is Conflict of Heroes. It's a uh, a tactical hex war game, meaning that you move around on a board and you can go from hex to hex to hex. This is a uh, very uh, well received, well used style of war game. Very common. Uh, this is a tactical one. <coughs> Here's more of an operational one. This is Falman Shaga. I don't. Maybe Moritz can tell me how to pronounce that correctly, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. See here, zoom in there, Monica. Here's your typical hexes again, but this is zoomed way out. All right, uh, that's that. This is this here game. This uh, this SCS standard combat series game is the atypical war game. It's, it's you're controlling battalions of armies on a big, huge map with hexes on it. There's another type of uh, of hex. Oh, exactly. That's basically the that's that's my hex game. So these are your traditional hex war games. So that uh, in the future you can now be able to identify what those are. So there's other kinds of war games out there. So let me show you what else we got here. Well, we got here's another style. Here is a card-driven war game. <laughs> this is my war games, but I call them war games because you have Twilight Struggle, which is a very popular one. Here's my game. It's called card driven because the nuts and the bolts of the game are cards. And the cards are how you move your armies across the map by using the operational value. Zoom in there, honey. The operational value of the card to do things. And some cards will have a special little Benjamin, a uh, Benedict Arnold treason card. So this this has no value on it, so you do the text. So these are they're the, the, the famous ones. Zoom back out. No one wants to look at my belly. All right. The... The, the the more famous uh, card-driven games are We the People, um, Hannibal, Rome vs. Carthage, Twilight Struggle is very popular, uh, Wilderness War, Napoleonic Wars, uh, what else? Like, I got all kinds of them up here. Let me just play them. Right? Here I Stand, Barbarossa to Berlin, Paz of Glory, Storm of Road. I, I like the card-driven games. Um, they're light, they take three or four hours to play, and... Uh, Pretty much the system is pretty much the same in all of us. So this is the one that started it all, though. This is We the People. So there's card-driven games. So now you can know what a card-driven game looks like. All right, what else we got here? Ah, here's one. This is an area impulse game. Now, this is Breakout Normandy, probably the most famous of all the uh, area impulse games. Let me show you what the map looks like. This is going to confuse you, I understand, because there's no hexes, but it's still a war game. Zoom in here, Monica. Mm -hmm. This is Normandy, and you'll see the areas, the big, huge areas. There's no hexes on this map, and you stack your counters in the different areas. And so it still uses a little count, little cardboard counters, and it's definitely a war game. You, <laughs> If you say it's not a war game, you're crazy. But it's areas, not hexes. And there's some hybrids where they're like an area control game but it's with hexes but those there's not very many of those so this is an area control game 
This is probably the most famous of all of them. Breakout Normandy, other examples of those would be, those are on the other side of my bookshelf. Um, but I just did a review on Storm over Stalingrad. That's the same system. There's Storm over Arnhem. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. Monty's Gamble. All right, so that is area control games. What else do I got down here in my bag of war games? Bag O war games. Oh, here's one. There's a block game. This is Hammer of the Scots, probably the most famous block game. Block game meaning there's blocks, right? Right. All right, so here we go. Here's, here's the blocks. Now, big, huge blocks. And blocks, if you look at the map, zoom in here, Monica. Mm -hmm. You'll zoom in here. This is also like an area control game, but it uses blocks. And so the biggest component that we'd name this would be by the blocks. So this is a block game. And the blocks, you rotate them. There's a fog of war because you don't know what I have. It's reversed. But uh, you rotate them based on how strong they are. And I can do some reviews of those in the future. But that's a block game. I have quite a few block games. There's a big stack of them. Most of them are Columbia games. They're the big block game people. Uh, yeah. Crusader, East East Front, Cuba, Quebec, Rommel in the Desert. Here's Bobby Lee. Um, Monica, you like block games, don't you? Second favorite. Second favorite behind card-driven games? Yep. All right. So there's, there's my block game. All right, what else we got down here? Oh, here's a monster game. This is World at War. This is a monster game. This game takes months, literal months to play. You have to have like a pool-sized table to set it up, and there's thousands of pieces. This is a grand global scale game. Um, the rule book is a book. It's only for the die-hard war gamers, and it, I don't even play this right now because I have nowhere to set it up and no one to play against. But these are the kind of games that you'll see typically only at conventions where they'll have it set up in the corner. They play it for four days straight and get maybe a third of the way done. Or uh, in some old grog nerd's basement somewhere. And uh, hopefully that'll be me one day. So there's there's a monster game. Oh, let's see what else I got down here. Here's a grand scale game. This is uh, Total Rick Craig. If you look at the back, zoom in there, Monica. Woo! You can. This is uh, for the whole battle for Europe. And it's hexes, once again, but it's not considered a hex game. This is more of a global scale game. It uses hexes, but not all of them do. Um, you control whole nations. And up here you have some more of those Axis and Allies families and things like that. What else do we have? Oh, we have one that I think is kind of a silly name. You have Ameritrash. Here's the, a, the classic example of Ameritrash. This is Fortress America. Ameritrash games, which I just think they're, I don't even like that title, I think it's silly. But uh, they're basically the whole Milton Bradley of games that are produced in America. Lots of dice rolling, plastic pieces, maps, conflict. Um, they've even got their own following, but I would just call these light war games, but I had to show you one. So that's, there you go, that's uh, Ameritrash games. What else, honey? Did I miss anything? Gary, did I miss anything? Uh... And there's, there's, there's hybrids that cross-pollinate between all the different types of games. But that's basically it. Over there's my ASL stuff. If you zoom down to bookshelf down there, you can see down there's the evil games. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the evil, the, the Euro games, the, my wife's designer games. I, I don't like Euro t Euro, the title Euro. I like the title uh, designer games. Um, so there you go. So that's... That's Wargaming School lesson number two. Now you have a basic uh, picture that you can associate with the different titles of different, or the different types of war games. So until next time, class is out. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.